In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a build definition that pulls source code from Subversion repository. So what I have set up here is a Team Foundation project uh, called Deep Space. The build definition I'm going to create will pull my project's Java source code out of the Subversion repository. So to create the build definition, I'll go ahead and I'll click this green plus sign here, and out of the list of definition templates, I will select the empty definition. Go ahead and I'll click OK. And then I need to add a build step. Since I'm building my project with Maven, I'm going to go ahead and add that Maven build step. I'll click Add here, then go ahead and click Close. As a part of that Maven build step, I need to give it the path, the POM file I need to build. So I'll go ahead and I'll enter that information there, just POM.xml. And then I need to set up the build definition to pull from the Subversion repository. So I've clicked the repository tab here, and you'll notice that the repository type has defaulted the Team Foundation version control. It's done that because the Deep Space project that I've created on Team Foundation server is a Team Foundation version control project. So in order to use Subversion, I'm just going to click the drop down here and select Subversion, the value here. What you'll notice right away is that uh, the connection field here, uh, the background of it is turned yellow. And what that's indicating to me is that this value, the, the connection property needs a value. What a connection is, is otherwise known as a, a service endpoint, is basically a URL and a set of credentials to connect to that URL. So what I need to do is I need to create a subversion service endpoint, and I do that by clicking the manage link here. When I do so, the services administration page will show up, and then which allows me to create that service endpoint. So I can click the new service endpoint here, select the version, and then this dialog box will pop up and allow me to add that repository connection. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a connection name that I can remember, and also give it the URL to my subversion repository right there. In addition, I need to provide the credentials to the repository username and password, and then click OK. Once I do that, I've successfully created that uh, subversion endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and close that tab, and then I can come back to this build definition. Now, all I need to do is refresh that list, and since there's only one item in the connection list, it'll go ahead and populate that. So now this build definition is set up to use that connection. The last thing I want to do is set up the continuation uh, continuous integration triggers. To do that, I slide over to the Triggers tab and click the checkbox next to, next to Continuous Integration. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 60 seconds so we don't have to wait too long for the trigger to run. And I'll also set up a scheduled trigger to run in, in a minute or two. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to, let's see if we can get it in at 1415. And then I need to save the definition, so I'll go ahead and I'll give it a decent name. Great, so now that I've got the definition saved with those triggers, I want to ensure that the code that I check in to that subversion repository is going to get built. So I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal window here, and then what I need to do is check out that subversion repository. So I'm going to go ahead and do so. Go ahead and check out that repository there, and then what I'm going to do find the source file that I want to change. Web app, JS, directives. And I'm going to go ahead and edit flyingstars.js. And I know I want to change line 44. I just want to comment this one out. Go ahead and do that. Save the file. Close gedit. Verify that the change has been made there. And go ahead and commit it. Okay, so that's been committed and it's uh, revision 9. So now what I can do is I will go back to the build. There's the build definition. I can view the builds that have been already been run. So what you can see here is the scheduled build that I had set up for a minute later already ran and it ran successfully. And you can tell that it's a, a scheduled build by hovering here and you can see the clock represents a scheduled build. The polling trigger also kicked off already as well because it identified that it had not built this definition yet. 
So 60 seconds after I save this definition, I queued this particular build off, but this is on source version 8. So what I'm expecting to have happen in a few seconds here is a build to get queued here for source version 9 with the changes that I've got. And what you can also do is if the builds are successful, you can come in, you can kind of see the results here. If you have tests that are um, going to be set up to run, you can see that the, the test for this one is, have passed. So I'll go back to look at the definition and see if my polling build has started. And you can see that's happened here. Here's the batch CI build. It's build 25 and the source version is source version 9. I can double click on this just like before and you can see here all the results for that particular build. You can see that it built the trunk branch at source version 9. And just to make sure and prove this out, I click on the, the get sources step and you can see that I'm syncing the repository of Subversion Deep Space. It's a version of Visual SVN server, and I checked it out at uh, revision 9. So, what this video was shown is uh, how to create a build definition that pulls source code out of the Subversion uh, repository, um, and also how to set up a scheduled and polling trigger um, for that build definition. You can find the write up of this walkthrough on our Java ALM documentation site at java.visualstudio.com.